Hi everyone, this is Donna. Welcome to the Sounds of Halloween Video Hop. Now, this is an internal hop here on the Whimsy Stamps channel. We are hoping to increase watch time here on the Whimsy Stamps channel while providing you with a little Halloween inspiration. We are all creating a voice sound Halloween card in collaboration with Easy Sound module. So for my card today, I'm going to be using the Spooky Kitties stamp set to create my kind of cutesy Halloween card. I stamped out all of the images with Copic Friendly ink onto a piece of Solar White 80-pound uh, cardstock. And I am using my Copic markers to color these images in. I have the caps of the markers I'm using on screen for easy reference, but I will have a blog post where I share all of the color combinations I used linked down below. So while I color, I will talk a little bit about this hop and the giveaway that is offered. Again, this is an internal hop, meaning that all of the videos today are on the Whimsy Stamps channel. And we are coming together to create content to increase the watch time on this channel and spread a little Halloween cheer. We appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to watch our videos and we wanted to reward you guys with a little giveaway. This giveaway is sponsored by Whimsy Stamps and LisaMensing.com. Whimsy Stamps is providing a $20 gift card to the store and Lisa will be adding an easy sound module to one random winner. In order to win the prize pack, you have to leave a comment on all four of the videos. We will do a random drawing from all of the comments left, and one lucky person will receive the gift card and the easy sound module. I will have all of this information listed down in the description box, so be sure to click that see more button to see all of this details. Now, if you're like me and you're going, what the heck is an easy sound module? Then let me tell you. So an easy sound module is essentially a recording gadget that allows you to record a sound from either like your phone or your computer and add it to your handmade cards or other handmade projects. This sound module is a product from Invite by Voice Sound Products, and I will link to their website down below so you can check them out if you're interested. But it was really easy to record the sound and put this card together. I'm going to guess that most of us had a harder time finding the sound we wanted than actually recording it and putting it together. A little bit later in the video, I will go over how I recorded the sound from my computer and um, onto the easy module, easy sound module, and then put the card together. So in the meantime, I will go ahead and finish coloring this image. And for this little cat, I just used some neutral grays to color it in. I, I did use the same exact combination for the other cat, but I think I messed up a part of that video and I wasn't able to use the um, that part. Anyway, as I usually do, I color by adding the deepest shadows or my darkest marker to both sides. And then I continually blend with lighter color until I get to the highlight area. And typically my highlight area is, is a little larger, it's a little more pronounced than the shadow areas. Once I finished coloring all of these images, I do use my Scan and Cut to cut them out and then I will set them aside to start creating the base of the card and the top panel.
For my card base, I'm using an entire sheet of 8.5 by 11 white cardstock. And I actually use two. So I'll grab my scoring board to score the fold lines. The first score line I make is at the three and a quarter mark. And then the second score line I make is at the seven and a half mark. I had to do a little math there to figure it out, but it is at the seven and a half mark. And then I can go ahead and fold those over and using a bone folder, kind of crease those edges. Now here's where I realize I probably need to use a second sheet. And that's because the third panel, the, the panel that would enclose the sound module was about a quarter inch shorter than the first two panels. So my solution was to create another sheet scored exactly the same as the first and then kind of place one panel on top of another to create sections or three sections. Now here I cut a little bit off so that it wouldn't be so bulky and it would fold over. And I think I am placing it incorrectly. Eventually I do realize what I did and I go ahead and flip the panels around so that that little cutoff section is really on the inside and enclosed by the sound module. But in the end, it does work all out and I'm able to fit my sound module in that opening and enclose it properly. Okay, so here's the way I recorded the sound onto my module for this card. Inside your order that you get, you get this little plug that plugs into one end of this sound module and the other end goes into your device. And then you simply press the little record button once to play your sound and record it. And then press the button again to stop recording. Now you can record onto this module more than once. So if you're not happy with your first recording, just do it again and it overrides what was previously recorded. The top of this panel is a lot of ink blending. And here I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I've cut down to three and a quarter. I'm sorry, three and three quarters by eight and a half. And I have a piece of masking tape in place for the moon. And then I will start ink blending with Distress Ink in Wilted Violet. I'm starting at the top panel and I'm just kind of blending halfway down. And then I'll grab the second ink and come up from the other side. On the other side of this panel, I'm adding chipped sapphire distress ink. And then where, where the two colors meet, I'll just go back and forth using my ink blending tool until that line where they meet fades and becomes a little less pronounced. I do finish this panel off with a little bit of black soot, distress ink, just at the edges, and then I'll use my other blending tools to blend out any harsh lines. Once I'm happy with the ink blending, I'll go ahead and spray the panel, and then blot it dry with some paper towels. I do add some gold splatters for a little bit of interest. And then I can set this panel aside to dry and work on the rest of the ink blending. For my little grassy hills, I have Evergreen Bow Distress Oxide ink. And I will combine a little bit of black soot at the edges. And I do bring in some Twisted Citron at the top just to brighten the panel up a little bit. Then I will use the Cloud and Grass Edger dies to die cut that panel. To save a little bit of time, I stamped out the sentiment from the stamp set at the top of the moon 
using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I did add black embossing powder and heat set that in place. Here I am adding just a little bit of shading onto the moon. I'm basically just making squiggly lines. And I'm adding C1. I'll blend that out with the C00. And then I do bring in a little bit of yellow with Y0000 for zeros just to brighten everything out. And at this point, we are ready to start putting this card together. I'm taking the bottommost grass layer and I'm using a little bit of liquid adhesive to attach that. I'll go ahead and trim off anything overhanging off of that panel with my scissors. And then I can start adding in the second grass layer, which I have popped up on foam squares. And then again, I'll just trim off anything that's overhanging. And honestly, this is where I should have stopped with my layering, but I kept going. I felt like I needed something more. And so I did add a third layer of the grassy hill popped up yet again. And then I decided it needed the second cat. So my bottom portion of this panel is pretty busy, but it's okay. I think it still looks cute. So anyway, I'll pop that little kitty cat on there. Also using foam adhesive. And then I can use um, liquid adhesive to attach my panel to the card base we created earlier. Okay, so here we are at the technical part of this card making and uh, how I'm going to put my sound module inside my card. I'm actually going to cut the piece apart and you just want to be extra careful not to cut your wires, otherwise it's, it's perfectly fine. Now, if you look at that little extension sort of sticking out the white part of that sound module you can see a couple of small notches and those you want to line up onto your score line and that little piece that is going to stick out it is wide so if your card base is wide it's not that noticeable but you'll go ahead and peel the backing of the one part of the sound module and place that down and then this is your speaker part and you don't want to do what I'm doing. You want to take the entire backing of the entire thing and there's your adhesive now and you can place your uh, speaker down onto your card. I just had to trim off a little more of that backing paper in order to get it to fit properly. Now I have double-sided adhesive at the top and the bottom and then some of it is onto the side of that panel but there is still a gap in between and you do want to leave that so that it doesn't interfere with the actual wires that make the sound begin and then I'll go ahead and close that up and press that into place and here's my sound. <laughs> Happy Halloween! And then I'll simply finish off my card by adding a couple of little bats that I stamped out from one of the earlier released images and then cut it out with my scissors and just colored it black and I'm using some glossy accents to add a little bit of shine. So that will do it for my part of this hop. Don't forget to leave a comment down below 
and hop along onto the other uh, three videos, leaving a comment on each one for your chance to win. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and like our videos. And if you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the Whimsy Stamps channel and hit that notification bell to be notified the next time we upload a video. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you another time.